generally speaking, I'm definitely not one of those guys who needs to buy a brand new phone every single year, but this year, I did, and I'm happy I made the upgrade to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And in this video, I'd like to share some of the things that I love about the phone, and some of the things that I didn't really like about the phone. It's definitely not going to be one of those detailed pixel peeping sort of reviews, but more of an overall impressions kind of review. Gerald, Phil and Gene, you guys rock when it comes to getting into the nitty gritty stuff and I'm definitely not about to even try to come close. Well, perhaps before I start talking about all the stuff I love about the iPhone 11 Pro Max, probably it's worth mentioning that I was using an iPhone 7 prior to this. So that being said, I guess I would be a great candidate to notice all the drastic improvements that comes with this iPhone. Anyway, let's start talking about some of the things I love about my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Man, what a mouthful. I think to save time in this video, I'm just going to call it 11 Pro Max from now on. First, let's talk about the build quality of this phone. I guess it goes without saying that whenever you buy Apple products, you're always guaranteed to get something that feels a bit more premium than pretty much everything that's out there and the iPhone Pro Max doesn't fall short of that. With its stainless steel chassis, this new iPhone is definitely not what you may call a lightweight phone compared to the previous iPhone built from aluminium. It feels quite weighty and substantial in the hand, and to me that's a good thing. Although I have to admit, because of the 11 Pro Max larger screen and weight, uh, it is kind of hard to actually use it with one hand and tie it all together. But I guess it has altered the way I use my iPhone slightly. Now I definitely don't want to be messaging or doing silly things while I'm driving and stuff like that. Okay, now let's talk about its looks. Some may say it looks a bit like a mutant or even a spider or even a three-eyed cyclops. But strangely enough, uh, I kind of like the way it looks. I mean, it looks so distinctive looking compared to the other iPhones that you definitely can't mistake the 11 Pro or the 11 Pro Max series from more of the affordable non-Pro series. To me, that does matter, especially if I'm spending that much money on an iPhone. I like to think that at least the iPhone should look a bit different compared to its more affordable range, especially after spending about a thousand bucks on it. One thing that struck me most too about the 11 Pro Max is the OLED screen brightness. It's way brighter than any iPhone I've ever used and currently I have mine 99% of the time at a bit less than a quarter brightness and I feel that that is pretty much bright already indoors. However, on a bright sunny day outdoors, the phone screen is still really bright because it pretty much maxes out at about 1200 nits and believe me, that is really bright. Now let's talk about the camera because that's pretty much the whole reason most people buy this phone for. Finally, this iPhone receives a major camera upgrade. Now it comes with a standard wide angle lens, a super wide angle lens and a telephoto lens too. The super wide angle lens has got a focal range of about 13 mm equivalent on a full frame sensor camera. And to be honest with you, that is really wide. I don't even have a lens like that for my DSLR. I do like the whiteness of the super wide angle lens. However, you do have to bear in mind that there are a few caveats that come with it. Number one being that it's so wide that you'll definitely sometimes, if you're not careful, see your fingers in the shot. So you've got to be very careful of how you hold a phone every time you shoot with a super wide angle lens. Also, the distortion around the edges of the frame is very exaggerated and if you happen to shoot any of your subjects closer to the edges of the frame, it's going to stretch and distort the subject matter quite dramatically. Unless of course that's a specific look that you're going for, I would be very very careful every time you do shoot with this lens. Try and keep the subject matter smack in the middle or don't shoot it too close to the edges. As for the telephoto lens, I somehow didn't find it as useful as a super wide angle or even the standard lens. I don't know why, it's just one of those focal ranges that I just hardly use. But there were times that I did use it anyway. Also, I really wish there would be a super wide angle lens on the front facing camera. However, that's definitely not the case with 11 Pro Max. Instead, if you do want to shoot super wide selfies or vlog with a super wide angle lens, you would need to use the rear facing camera instead. Which is a shame, I guess, cause it would be so much easier having the ability to view yourself while shooting on a super wide angle lens. Finally, this iPhone comes with a really good night shooting mode. I must say, the night shooting mode is quite impressive indeed. 
However, you do have to bear in mind because the night shooting mode does take a slightly longer exposure, you have to be relatively steady while shooting in night shooting mode. If not, you'll see some shaky shots. Since we still are on the topic of the iPhone camera, let's talk very briefly about the video. Now, shooting videos on the iPhone looks way smoother with improved stabilization algorithm and optical stabilization and stuff like that. Some of the shots that come out of this phone really looks like something that was shot on a gimbal and that is amazing. There's no optical stabilization in the super wide angle lens, however it does come with digital stabilization and it does look really good. The iPhone can shoot 4K up to 60 frames a second and in HD up to 240 frames a second. It's got fantastic dynamic range and I'm guessing it's some magic that's going inside the phone. While all I can say it is really good. Anyway, on the battery life. The iPhone 11 Pro battery is really insane. For the first time ever in a long while since the Nokia days, this is the only phone that I've used that I need to charge only once a day and that's amazing. I think Apple really got their ingredients right with this phone. It does come with a fast charger and for half an hour you get 50% charge and that's really good. I guess the other thing that's quite disappointing with this phone is the fact that they're still using the lightning cable charger so yeah well at least it's a type c type hmm what else haven't i covered oh if you want great control shooting your photos and your videos i would highly recommend downloading this app it's called moment and you can do so many things with it changing the shutter speed doing slow shutter speeds um shooting in log profile for your videos it's really great so give that app a try oh yeah i almost forgot this phone can really do great edits on iMovie and the best part about using iMovie on this phone is the fact that you can start doing your rough edits on the phone and what you can do is you can export the same project onto Final Cut Pro onto your Mac or your laptop and, and you can pretty much be editing your stuff that you were editing on the phone straight on the Mac. I mean that's amazing. Can you tell me one phone that can do that? I know it's a feature that's been around, but with this new computing power of the A13 chip, I think it really makes sense now to start editing your rough cuts from the phone itself. So all in all, I can say that I am definitely happy with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It does have a few shortcomings, of course, but which phone doesn't? To me, anyone who is upgrading from any iPhone up until iPhone 7 or 8 would definitely enjoy this upgrade. But if you're coming from a new iPhone like the iPhone 10 upwards, you may want to hold your cash and wait for the iPhone 12 which is due next September. Rumors have it, it will be a whole new design and you'll have 5G support. And who knows, maybe even a front facing super wide angle lens. Oh well, at the end of the day, it's pretty much up to you what you decide to get. For me, I'm definitely happy with my iPhone 11 Pro Max. It is, in my opinion, the best iPhone yet for now. So if you did enjoy this short unscientific review, please do give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video then.